All right, guys. So we're here now to do the assembly for uh, the my revamped uh, Ronin uh, gun. Um, I I did the Ronin gun probably four so eight years ago, and there was not much reference material out, and I've been wanting for a long, 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 long time to go back and redo this, revisit it, and. Um, Clean some things up, make some things functional, which I put a spring-loaded trigger in this time. I got more of the details and, and a more true and accurate grip. Um, I did get the swing-out chamber with the removable um, cartridge now. Um, so, and also I made sure that for the one for those of you that wanted to, this ends up being um, an inch and a half clear acrylic dome that you can find online um, I don't know they're like eight or nine bucks are ridiculously expensive but if you wanted to put a clear dome on here you could instead of this I, I and I specifically wanted to make it a standardized size uh, for that but it is uh, auto closing stays closed it's magnetic so and then spring loaded trigger so here's what we're going to do we're going to get out Oh, here, I'll actually show you. There's there's the oh, the new. Here's the old. Of course, there's a big difference. It's painted. But um, I, I redid the, the trigger area, of course, to make a spring-loaded trigger. Redid the grip area. Uh, again, um, in the in the painted pictures, the, the rope that that Michael with Fan Fiction Prop braided and put around the grip doesn't come with the kit. Uh, that was bought at Home Depot. It's just the small uh, twine, and then you can braid it. And then once you braid it, you wrap your grip, and it looks perfect. Um, uh, I redid very uh, a, a few little details in the the barrel body section here, but really concentrated on getting this to be functional, the trigger to be functional, and the grip uh, a little bit more accurate. Um, so. There you go. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and get the assembly started. It's not too 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 bad of an assembly, uh, but this is the way it'll come right here. Um, then just dump all the parts out, and so we we have our main barrel section. We have our barrel end. Um, we have our main body section. We've got our. Um, pop out chamber swing out chamber the main part of the grip and we have the left right grip um, our orange tip of course which we got to have and our little bag of hardware here is the, the cartridge and it is hollow so if you did put that on there, if you wanted to put a light in there or something and maybe rig up like a little switch or something in the back to turn it on or something like that, you know, I, I tried to leave some space for people to do that. Uh, that was one of the requests over the, the, the time of messing around with it. So, and then we've got a trigger. We have a, uh, the spring and rod reten uh, retention block. And we have our two magnets. So let's go ahead and get our magnets out. Lay that over there. Now, the funny part was when I was doing even more research this time, since there's a lot of like information out there and a lot of the prop guns that were sold at auctions and stuff, I never was able to find one of the prop guns or anybody that could confirm that this even had a moving trigger, that it, there was a push button switch on the front of it but not actually a moving trigger. So now we have a, mo a moving trigger. So all right, so we have a spring. We have the big uh, long 45 millimeter long M4 screw that goes from the grip to the body. Um, then we have the two different steel rods. One of them is the trigger slide rod and the other one is the, uh, the pivot rod for the, um, for the chamber. So what we're probably going to do 
is let's well let's just start on let's put all this to the side but I use the magnets to keep all my crap in, in together all right so what we're going to want to do is I'll go ahead and show you kind of the function here is you have a pivot point and so this goes in all right we use a steel rod let's let me get it out of the magnetized pile so that steel rod goes in there okay For, you can't go past that but it can go this way like it should okay when we glue the body and the bar the main barrel section together you have the magnet holes that face each other and so th that's literally all it is that when you glue it together all that holds the rod in place it's all good to go so really the first thing that we need to do is get our magnets in and get our magnets in the right way the correct direction so like i do in every video take your two magnets go get you a sharpie or something black sharpie red sharpie doesn't matter something that you can draw or mark on both sides of this so i'm going to mark that side i'm going to mark this side okay let that dry for a minute. While we do that, I'm going to get the glue out. And to answer the question, you can use regular thick super glue, uh, but use a good name brand like Loctite or something. The, the cheap super glue you buy at like Dollar General, it flashes too quick and, it, and it, it lets fumes off that puts ghost marks on your paint job or on your plastic and stuff. Uh, but the good name brand stuff actually, as it cures, it doesn't normally do that. I use what's called a CA glue. It's a two-part glue. It's basically two-part super glue. You got thick super glue and then an activator. You spray on it and it and it quick cures. Um, so get this out here. And hopefully, it's not all dried up here. I was just shooting another video, and I think I think we're good. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Barely, but we're good. Don't do what I just did. Ooh, shit. Yeah, we're definitely good now. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. So, basically, the little rhyme I have in my head depends on the Sharpie, but, like, this is a black Sharpie. So, in my brain, I'm saying black to the back. So, in other words, when you glue this in, you want to put the black mark to the back of the hole. And then when you do the other side, you'll do the same thing. Well, let me get this back to you. Um, and as long as you keep that rhyme in your head, whether it's a red, red Sharpie, so red to the back, green to the back, whatever color it is, that's just a rhyme that I, I have because I've screwed up before and glued these in the wrong way. I mean, of course I have. So normally what I do, if I can get to the, the magnets real easy, it's a lot like a weird spot to get to. I just leave the two stuck together and do a small little drop. Not like teeny tiny, but basically we're just wanting to make sure we don't put too much in there that it comes oozing out. So there, I stuck it in, I stuck that in there and then I, I um, swiped it away and we're good to go. And I think I just wiped the black off. I did. That's the first time that's happened. That activator took it right off. So once it's cured a little bit, there we go. I'm going to stick that back on and remark the back side of that. Must have just got that wet just, just right where it came off. Anyways, so there. That's in there. So now we know no matter what we do, as long as that black mark on that magnet goes in to the back side of that, we're good to go. So I'm going to take this, do a little, little dab will do you. Because again, when you put that in there, it's going to squish out everywhere, which is what you want it to do. So black side to the back side. There you go. And let that cure for a bit before you start trying to stick that together and go, hey, look, oh, it's magnetized. Because since you're going from a ferrous, um, non ferrous to a, a plastic body just let it cure good because you you can pull that loose and start a whole cascade of you having to re-glue and all that stuff 
but while while that's happening we're going to take our um our body here and again people will say hey do you assemble then paint or do you paint then assemble i pre-assemble i stick i stick everything together to see where i do and don't need to paint and then i'll take it apart and i normally paint everything separate um or at least prime everything separate like on this i would probably uh, go okay wait that goes in there so there's no need like I can have an edge to grab this by the paint and that that's my main reason for painting separate is so that you've got places to hold things uh, like this that you know I, I could stick something down in these holes to hold this or back here in this section so I, that I can you know prime and spray and paint and do all that good stuff and then glue it together uh, or I could prime it, sand it, which, you know, that'd be the other question. What, what paints? Regular spray paints work fine. I usually use a filler uh, primer, a light coat, dust it off with like 500 grit sandpaper, another light coat, dust it off because it sands super easy, dust it off with 500 grit sandpaper, and you'll be slick, super, super ready to go. Uh, but most of these parts like this, I probably wouldn't even prime because the print lines are so teeny tiny by the time you do two or three light base coats and remember light you don't have to have a hundred percent coverage with every coat that you do that's how you get runs and the paint too thick and you're not giving it enough time to cure just a light dust coat let it kind of cure for a few minutes you know even to where it's barely tacky do you another light one I've I've done I've worked on stuff and, and done paint jobs on some of my props where I've done six or seven base coats, but that's from a distance doing them very lightly because they involved a lot of interlocking tight tolerances and I wanted a nice finish, but without it being super thick. And um, as long as you give enough time between each coat to properly cure you're good to go if you if you're if you're in too big of a hurry you're going to get that gummy mess and you're just going to create a nightmare so just remember you can always put more on taking taking it off is a bitch so just take your time there's no sense in being in a hurry um but anyways so like something like this i would probably glue this together and then use back here to hold it and start base coating it because really there's like i said on this these two particular pieces the lines are so small there's really not too many there's not really any deviations by the time you do your base coats and then do some weathering or some accent colors and then do your clear coat it's all going to be glassy smooth anyways um so what we'll do is we'll go ahead we're going to join these two pieces together the body and stuff so what we need is this dude, and it goes in from this side, because that's the side it swings in from. It's the shorter of the two metal rods, and we're gonna drop the metal rod in there. Okay? And what we'll do before we glue is go ahead and stick this together, and I mean, the magnets itself almost hold it. But there we go, look at And it, the magnets are close enough and strong enough that even from a distance, like with the weight of it going down, it will still pull it right back up. I was extremely tickled about that once I figured out all these these angles and stuff inside. It is, yeah. Anyways, all right, so on this, uh, what I always suggest is you put your glue down inside the hole. That way when you slide it together, you squish the glue down. If you were to put the glue on this, as you slide it together, you're going to push the glue out. But at the same time on this one, kind of particular, is put a little bit of glue on this edge and just a little here. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make as much mechanical attachments uh, with this little lip edge here and here, all for strength reasons. That's it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do a little bead on the inside. Probably just a little bead across the bottom. Now I'm gonna take just a little bit. You, it doesn't have to be much. That's the thing, you don't have to see it goo out everywhere for it to be effective. 
All right, and then I'm gonna put a little activator on there. And I'm gonna take this bad boy and go ahead and slide it together. Hold it right where I want it. Make sure that my seams are like I want them to be. I'm gonna hold it for just a minute. And this is nothing about the CA glue. It's technically already glued. I'm just holding some pressure on it for the last bit that's still setting just for that additional mechanical bonding and we're good to go and we are fully functional there so uh and what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll get this dude glued in right now too um and again um you know with this one this one will go in and set all the way to the floor in here uh where normally i have my other parts fall short of setting in the floor and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you in a second like this it's the same same uh, feature all the way down so it will absolutely go all the way and set on the floor but on some other parts whenever I'm designing other parts say you have uh, a peg that you need to go into a slotted socket you don't want to make that peg the exact distance or depth of what that socket is. Because what happens is, is you'll run into a situation where that peg will bottom out before your parts actually get to touch. So you always make the peg or, or, or uh, a little short or the socket a little deeper so that you're sure that that peg is doing its alignment job, but your body, your two pieces are actually physically touching for the bonding. Yeah, I mean, the, the peg and stuff you want to help with the bonding, but it's there for alignment. And like I said, if the peg is 10 millimeter long peg and a 10 millimeter deep hole, what's going to happen is that's going to bottom out before your parts actually get to physically touch. And that's not what you want. But on this, it doesn't matter because this is going to physically touch the bottom no matter what. And that's how it, it, it goes together. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is this trigger we need the trigger the spring and the rod and basically inside the body this is what it this is what it looks like okay um, and what you can do is take this spring and put it up to this hole and rotate it counterclockwise and it will actually snap in but you you don't need to worry about that because when we put all this together all of this is going to get crammed in and it'll eventually seat itself just fine but inside the body this is what it looks like okay and this goes in from the back side which the rod slides in it and what this is is that's just a keeper so this is what we're well if i had just let the rod slide out of there this is what we're dealing with inside okay and the trigger trigger does that that's all it's that's so thing that it does so what we're going to do is we're going to take the trigger we're going to lay it in here this way and we're going to rotate it up there you go so you should be able to take this rod and let me see if i can see the hole down in there for you guys yeah you're not going to be able to see down in there well sort of you can anyways you can see the hole of the trigger down in there so what i'm going to do is drop that in move this trigger around until it drops the rod you see the rod you jiggle it around till you see the rod go ahead and drop from about there and you see it drop in then you take the spring and drop it on top of the rod let's see if we can get a uh, almost you can see down there the springs around the rod you see the the, the triggers here so now your whole goal is to take this dude with this hole, stick it down in here, and you'll have to wiggle it around to get the rod to go in. But look, now you're in, trigger works just fine. Now, here's the part on this. This is your grip. There's a notch and a hole. If you just take that notch and slide that boy, bad boy up, you don't actually have to glue. Hold on, I had to use my belly to hold it. <laughs> You don't actually have to glue the grip on if you don't want to. That way, if you ever need to take it off and service the spring or something for that, that bad boy 
we'll go down. Hang on. Let me undo all this real quick. Let me find my, okay, my bigger screwdriver here. So this, once it's screwed in, that's what it looks like. And it's going, it's being screwed into there. So all we're going to do is we're going to push that dude in. Wait, we got to find the rod again because I let it fall out. Come on. Come on, Rod. There we go. All right. So we're going to take this dude. We're going to put it all together. I'm going to use my belly. I'm going to, there we go. Find the screw. And this is a long-winded screw. Do not use a drill to put the screw in. You create it, anything you're working with. PLA, ABS, nylon, anything. Anytime you're using a screw to cut threads, which is what we're doing here, it's making threads, and the threads will be there after that, after you take the screw out. Uh, you do not want to use a drill because even with, say, something like nylon that can handle very extreme high heat, the friction of you screwing that screw in is hundreds upon hundreds of degrees. I'm talking extremely hot. You will melt nylon. You will melt ABS. Um, so now you, those of you that know how to use a drill and how to be gentle that it's not off full on, off all full on, that you know that you have a progressive and you want to take your time, you can. But those of you that just think a drill is full on, full off, um, just don't do it. So you get there and tighten it down and now you're good to go. Trigger works and stuff. So these, what, what you want to do, since you want, if you want to make this to where you can remove the grip, when you glue these on, just make sure that you keep the glue in the areas that don't touch the body. And it will come right on and off without issue. So what we're going to do, uh, where's my glue? We're going to go in here and I'm just going to go around the very edge of this with my coffee shaky hands here. We are going to attach all of that and let it set. While that one is setting, I'm going to come around here and do the same thing. So see something like on this, I would probably glue these on and then prime and paint just because, I mean, you're wrapping these, you know, with the rope and there's really not a reason. Um, um, like, I mean, you can even, even if you glue them together and you spray and you, and you sand and stuff, you'll still have the seam lines. Uh, but I mean, reality, you're not going to see any of that because all of this is going to be wrapped. Um, but it's a good fit. I'm six foot four. So I got kind of big hands, uh, but even like smaller hands that they're, they're, you know, it's, it's a perfect fit. Uh, so we can have our little chamber here. And um, again, uh, inch and a half clear acrylic dome, but you can also even buy frosted domes um, for this. Uh, that just search for, um, I guess, yeah, they're just um, half, half. I'm trying to think of what was the best term that I ended up using. It was like half acrylic sphere, half acrylic ball. Uh, something, but you'll find a lot of companies pop up with them, um, but they're all outrageously overpriced. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say anybody's stuff's overpriced. I mean, it is whatever the value is that they could get at the time, I guess. Right now, everybody seems to be trying to get top dollar for everything. And then why and when they have to pay top dollar for everything? My company overcharges for everything. But why do I have to overpay for everything? Because <laughs> you're all screwing each other over. <laughs> Anyways, so we glue that on. That's good to go. Let me find my glue top here. Let me get my activator out of the way. So here it is. Pop it over. Slap it in. Good to go. Which I think that, I mean, you can't beat that has that good a strength and I mean it's not going anywhere unless you push it and then
Yeah. And don't forget, you have your orange tip, so make sure you put your orange tip on there. Um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, there you go. There has been, there is a seven-year-old, eight, eight-year-old model that I made that I have finally got a chance to update. Um, and this was a model I made because I was already a Stargate fan. Um, and I wish there was a lot more unique like guns or blasters from Stargate. But when I was thinking about, uh, it was always one that I really liked. And, and so when I got to thinking about, I want to do uh, something from Stargate. I mean, of course, Ronan's gun was the first thing that kept popping in my brain. But anyways, there you go. Um, the new revamped uh, Ronin gun. Appreciate it, guys.